So we know that the reason that most people want savings, it's, it's a natural feeling that, hey, I want money saved up. I want money that I have, you know, setting aside for, um, you know, a rainy day. I want money setting aside that it, it provides security, right? Any type of savings provides us with security. But the issue with this is that having savings while still having debt or having investments while still having debt is a net zero transaction. It is not impacting your net worth at all. Now, what do I mean? So we have talked about net worth a bit previously, and your net worth is nothing more than everything you own minus everything that you owe. So it is your assets minus your liabilities for those of you all uh, who know accounting. So assets minus liabilities equals equity in accounting. Well, here we're talking about assets minus liabilities equal to net worth when it comes to an individual. And so your net worth does not change, right? And we want to be millionaires. Well, millionaires are those with million dollar or greater net worths. Okay. So if you have, you know, $30,000 in savings and you have $40,000 in debt, you still have a negative $10,000 net worth. And that is a big part of my issue with this is that saving in lieu of paying off debt is not going to get you anywhere as far as pushing towards the millionaire status. Now, especially in this way where we're talking about, okay, just putting the money away in a savings account, because if you're putting the money away in a savings account, then that money is making basically nothing at this point. You're making very, very little as far as interest in some type of savings account. But on your consumer debts that you may be making minimum payments on uh, or something like that, you are accruing interest. And the issue with this is that that money is growing in balance when you really want it to be uh, declining in balance as quick as possible. When the money you're putting over uh, in the savings is not really increasing in balance much at all. So paying off the debt in lieu of that basic savings account is going to make the most sense because you're actually going to save yourself more money uh, by paying that debt down quicker. Now, does this mean that we don't need to have any money in savings? Of course not. Of course you need some type of savings account, some type of emergency funds, but it needs to be done in the correct context. It needs to be done in the correct order. And the correct order, as I've set forth in the financial action plan, is after you have paid off all of your consumer debt. But you notice the second part of the financial action plan is to set aside one month of expenses into a starter small emergency fund. And the reason that you do this is so you have some money sitting there, you have a little bit of security that you can fall back on um, if something bad happens. But it's going to force you into that place where you know, when you're paying off all your consumer debt, that you are just being intense. You're trying to get through that as quickly as possible so you can actually start building that savings in the fifth part of the plan. And once you can start to build that savings, you can start to feel uh, that feeling of security. But honestly, I would rather have zero savings and zero debt than to have $30,000 in savings and $40,000 of debt or $30,000 of debt if you want to look at equal numbers. Because that debt, like I said, is going to continue to nag at you. It's going to continue to eat away at your monthly cash flow. And that is a big problem. We do not want our monthly cash flow to be eaten away because our biggest wealth building tool is the income that we make. And we don't want that income being eaten up by these debt payments. And so even though you may not have savings then maybe you use that savings to pay off the debt as you should if you are in that part of the financial action plan where you are paying off all consumer debt then maybe you use your savings to pay off the debt and then you're left with no savings well guess what you're actually left with money at the end of each month you're no longer having to run a really tight budget where you can't pay for anything other than the minimum payments on things that you have to pay maybe you pay off all of those debts that you had outstanding, maybe you had a car payment or credit cards or student loans or medical bills or something, and you pay those things off, well, now you actually have money at the end of each month, and you can quickly build up 
that nice emergency fund, that nice savings again. And you won't have to worry about that loss of safety by spending that money on the debt payments. And yes, it seems like it's going to, and it will, it will hurt quite a bit to write that big check from your savings to some amount of debt. I have done this before. I have had to do this before. I've told you guys before about having student loans and uh, wanting to pay those student loans off as quickly as possible. And the way I did that, I already had some money saved and me and my wife ended up having even more money saved. And we were like, we need to take care of these student loans. Well, what did we do? We wrote big checks to get the student loans paid off. And it, yes, it hurts, but how quickly can you build back up that savings that you had and it gives you such a feeling of, of calm and, and such a feeling of um, security when you get your debts paid off. So um, you may not notice it now. You may not think about it much now, but you're thinking of everything in the, in the you know, purview of actually having debt payments because that's what you're used to. You're used to having debt payments. You're used to not having any money left at the end of each month. Therefore, you're thinking, oh, if I pay off you know, all of this debt with the savings I have, then I won't be, be left with no savings and, and not a really good way to build it back up. Well, the, the problem with that is that you will have a way to build it back up, and that's because you're actually going to have some residual income to build that back up with. And let us not forget for a moment that debt holds us back. And I want to jump into this for just a second. Debt is not something we want just hanging around. We don't want debt to be hanging around in our lives and just remaining in our back pocket as we move along and we're just sitting there feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. Uh, even though you may be feeding your savings too, but like I said, your savings is not growing. Your savings is not doing anything for you when you have debt sitting around. And so that debt is going to continue to just be a drain on you. It's going to continue to pull you down and not allow you to build wealth for the future and not allow you to save as much as you could save, not allow you uh, to buy things in cash like you may want to buy things in cash. Because honestly, debt is a cycle. When you go into debt, it puts a crunch on your cash flow. And when you don't have much cash flow, then the things that you want to buy, you can't afford. And so you're easily talked into purchasing them on debt payments. Therefore, you're sitting around with more debt payments. And so it is a cycle that you continue to roll through when you are in debt. And that is a big issue. It's a big issue to remain in this cycle because it's deadly. You have to break the cycle. You have to go ahead and say, I am done with debt. I am done with this thing that has been a drain on me. I've talked before about debt being bondage. Debt is holding us down. It's tying us down and not allowing us to do all the things that we should be doing as we move forward in our financial lives and as we push towards financial freedom. It's not allowing you to do those things and that's a problem. We want to break free. We want to get rid of those chains and move forward in our financial lives doing the, all the things that we ever hope to do.